Let's take a look at a casino style slot machine beacon light that you might find on top of gaming equipment. This particular one is made by Suzo Hap or supplied by Suzo Hap. Uh, Suzo Hap is actually a combination of two companies, I think Suzo and Hap, uh, quite big in the European gaming industry. I think there may be Japanese connections too, not sure about that. So, a couple of things that are interesting about this beacon light it's very similar to what you find on top of factory machines. But in this instance, there are a few differences because this is optimized for uh, equipment in the sort of gaming industry. So if I turn this on, it's not very bright because it is tungsten lamps, but it is designed to be used in the casino after all. But uh, it is used for indicating various machine conditions. There are three connections on this connector at the bottom, plus if you notice, and it's quite significant to mention this, there is this thick metal braid. The metal braid is important. It's connected to the rest of the braid in the machine. It's a security feature. So apart in America, the bottom color uh, denotes coinage. It denotes the, the color of it will determine what value of coinage the machine uses. Although that's kind of out the window with modern uh, multi uh, sort of credit machines. But also it will flash to indicate when the cash drawer has been opened and it will keep flashing until the machine's played again. I'm, I'm not sure about this. This is stuff that I read up. I wanted to see what the Americans did versus versus the UK. But uh, the top machine is used to signal to the uh, attendant if someone pressed the button in America. Uh, but there are other combinations uh, that the lights can flash that will indicate other machine conditions. Like, for instance, the machine is out of service or it's failed in some way and it needs attention because, well, when you're talking casino machines, uh, downtime is expensive. So let's talk about the braid coming out the bottom of this because that is quite important. It is connected. Well, let me get the meter. Here is the meter. Let's stick this to continuity and I shall hook it onto the braid and you shall see that it is connected firmly to this metalized plastic base and to the middle ring and to the top ring. Everything metal in this is connected to that braid. And the reason for that is because of zappers and RF equipment that is used to cheat the machines. In the early days before they knew about such things, in the early days of arcade games in general, people used to get free credits on arcade machines like video games like Space Invaders by using one of those uh, clicky gas igniter things, the piezoelectric spark, and they used to put it in the coin mech metal frame and just click it. And because they didn't really understand the concept of this happening and grounding, the spark used to jump onto the uh, coin mech and it used to actually trigger credits or it would damage the circuit board. But the people doing that didn't really care about such things. The other connections, oh, actually, I should keep talking about this first. So that's the reason for this very low resistance braid. It's designed so, so that if you stick a, a sparker onto any of this metalwork or an RF antenna onto it, it will actually ground it to the general uh, echo potential zone of the machine that won't actually it corrupt the processor. Uh, the other thing they do in some machines is they have an antenna wire running in the wiring loom. And in the case of an older machine in the UK, uh, Barcrest MPU3, that antenna wire simply went to a 555 that was configured as a voltage threshold detector. If it detected disturbance on that antenna wire, it would reset the game. It would just basically just trigger the reset and the game would just reboot from scratch. It just meant that if people tried tricking the machines, they didn't get anywhere. Uh, the other connections here, You've got three connections. You've got the black, which is common, common positive, which is odd. Uh, and you've got the red and the blue, which uh, are the two separate beacons. And each of them has a diode in series. I'm guessing the reason it's got a diode in series is, again, with British gaming equipment, uh, a lot of the lamps in the machine are on a matrix and sort of X, Y grid of uh, lights. And it's run at a higher voltage and it's scanned. Um, and that lets them run a lot of lamps from... A small number of uh, control lines in the processor. And the reason for that is British gaming equipment. If you look at British and European, you look at Dutch games, you look at German games, you look at American games, they're all different. And if you look for 
British Fruit Machines online, you'll see that ours are covered in a wall of tungsten lamps inside behind little light boxes, behind graphics, and there's really complex gameplay. It's not a simple thing. It's not just press start, the real spin. Uh, with British Machines, it's actually, you're, you're playing quite a complex, multi-featured game. Uh, with the mechanical reels, this is all before the video monitors started creeping in. I have to say, the curved video monitors in the, arc, the casino machines are fantastic. I love them so much. I love the graphics too. Uh, but in the, the British machines, you've got the mechanical looking reels. They're not. In the, it's, like, it's like the old pool handle fruit machines, but they've got stepper motors on. The processor decides what is actually going to be on those, those reels before it spins them. It's all a bit... A bit of a cheat. But anyway, to allow maximum versatility of this, they, uh, and this is odd, to mount it on top of the machine in the first place, they've got uh, two built-in threaded inserts with the screws that go in from inside the machine. But strangely, uh, you can just uh, remove this dome nut from the top of the machine. I wouldn't actually recommend this doing this in a casino. And you can take the top cover off and then the first layer of filter. Note that it's just wrapped around inside. Here is the central metal core with a sort of insulating shaft on it uh, and the first tungsten lamp. If you remove this, you'll see there's a little metal tang here. This is to ground that uh, metal layer. And then there is the next layer of illumination. And these lamps, in this case, are just 12-volt lamps. They're push-in lamps. And in turn, they're actually little a classic holder that is just basically pressed onto a little stick up strip from this uh, base here um this particular light because of the multiple dominations the multiple uh, functions it actually comes with a spare blue gel an orange gel a yellow gel a green gel a red gel and another diffusing white diffuser Diffusing white diffuser, yes indeed. And to put these in, you basically just, well, wrap them round. Suppose you wanted this one to be a red one, you just roll it up and stuff it in. That's pretty much how it is. And then put the diffuser behind it. I suppose that would look quite nice without diffuser, but here it is with the diffuser to create that nice, soft, red glow. Um, so very similar in a way to the beacons used in factory equipment that indicate things like, you know, running low in materials or operator assistance required or it's just broken down completely. Uh, but quite a nice little setup. Uh, the most notable difference between the factory ones and the casino ones is this grounding strap that is designed to protect against fraudulent activities. But quite interesting to see inside one. Uh, now you know what's inside them when you go into a casino in Las Vegas and you see all these little illuminated beacons on top of the machines.